can you have too much protein um, in one sitting? Because that's a big kind of conversation that's online. Some people argue you can, some people argue you can't. And secondly, how important it is to make sure that you're not having a super low carb diet if you're having a very high protein diet. And I'm thinking about people building their plates with maybe a fillet of salmon and, and it's hard, I say vegetables, but I talk about that. I know they're carbohydrates, but it's a very low carbohydrate diet and how that would be formed if you didn't have some brown rice or some brown pasta or whatever on the side. Um, so in that context, it's a two pronged approach. Can you have too much protein? And also um, what about a high protein, low carb diet for women? Yeah. So the, study that came out, well, I think it was uh, three months ago, that was looking at the 100 gram dose of protein and how long that took to digest. And over 24 hours, it was still improving muscle protein synthesis and stuff. It was done in men. It hasn't been done in women. So we don't know definitively. And we know that there is a difference in gastric emptying rate for women versus men, the way that women respond to protein, protein intake versus men. So when I hear that, I'm like, it's a caveat. Yes, we know there's no upper limit for men, but it was a very small in, and we don't know what the training status was. We have to look at the age. There's so many different factors that come into digestion that I'm still holding on to. Look, we know that you need regular protein throughout the day at around 30 or 40 grams at each meal, maybe 15 to 20 grams each snack. And if you're exercising, you know, as a recreational athlete on the days that you're not training three meals and one snack, it's probably enough. And if you, on the days that you are training, you want to bookend your training with some food before and after. And that's the simplest way that I can get people to visualize what they're supposed to be doing with regards to how they space protein out. When we're looking at low carb, high protein, this is a big problem because now women are focusing more and more on that palm size or palm size and a half. And they're forgetting that you don't have to have that that size of salmon or meat on the plate, you can have something that's like a bootable, right? And you're having some sweet potato, you're having some tempeh, you're having some beans, you're having slice of beef in there. You're having lots of dark green leafy veggies and some fruit. So you're having lots of complex carbs. And then you're also having your protein because there's so many different sources of protein. And I'm also, yeah, don't forget the quinoa. Don't forget the amaranth or the buckwheat. Like all of those can be accents. I try to steer people more towards the visualization of like a Japanese plate where the major things of Western society are actually the accents and the things that are accents for the Western society, like our veggies and things is the main course. So it's like, okay, let's, let's bring them together. So you know that when you are having protein, I don't mean a big slab of fish. I mean, fish is in there and it's part of the accent with all the other good things that contribute to protein. And when I start saying that and people are like, oh, I get it now. I get it. So I can have a, a salad at lunch that is some fruit and some um, spinach and some beans, and maybe I'm going to have a little bit of roasted chicken. So I'm getting all these great things and I feel satiated, but I don't feel overly full from too much, you know, dead protein hanging out in my stomach. And then we have the people who are like, what about the carnivorous diet? I'm like, that completely wrecks your gut microbiome. Like, I don't understand why people would just want to do something that's so con contra indicative to having a healthy gut. Wow, I love that this is going to probably go a bit AWOL on YouTube with that comment, but I, I agree. Um, we had Dr. Will Bolsowicz, who comes on talking a lot about obviously fiber fuel and the importance of fiber for the gut. Um, and I think that is really important, right? I think looking at now, I'm already building out, I want to make sure that I'm keeping track of this, a perfect woman's day, which isn't always perfect. I'm going to reframe that. How a day should be looking for a woman who has no health conditions, going to put it out there. Um, isn't excessively an athlete, not an excessive endurance training, um, but basically wakes up, has some water, I imagine, has either 15 grams of protein for breakfast, um, minimum if they're not hungry, but if not, they have a very good 30, 30, 30 rule, 30 grams of, well, 30 grams, 30% 30 fat, 30% carbohydrate, 30% protein. Um, and that's how we want to be building our plate. And we want to be having at least 1.6 grams of protein for one kilo of body weight. And we want to be spacing that constantly throughout the day. And we want to make sure that it's whole grains. We want to make sure that it's a variety of foods, a variety of proteins. It's not just a slab of one. We're really mixing it in for the diversity. That's how I'm 
garnering women's health on a plate or as yeah. a lifestyle right now. Am yeah. I right? Perfect. You are. And then on the sub sides, we have to have room for like whiskey and dark chocolate and coffee and wine as the, you know, the occasional accents that makes life so fun. That's the thing. Okay. So we're not, we're, we're taking out any extreme and we're going real back to balance and basics here. 